But after that, um, after that meeting with that other brown belt, I was more motivated because I said, I made black belt in this style, but what they've got at this place is better. So I need to make my rank here. I need to go for a black belt here. It took me 14 years to make black belt in this school. Um, I need to tell a little bit of, of what it was like. When I say that we did full contact, we did full contact with boxing gloves on. Um, I've seen people with their arms broke, with many concussions. I've seen people with their jaws broke at class. Um, and we fought full contact after green without gloves, empty hand. We were allowed to hit each other in the face. We kicked each other. We didn't touch the knees or the groin. We kicked each other and hit each other as hard as we could to try to prove that we were number one. And we did that for years. And the whole time that I was doing that, I was also hearing Bible verses. And the Lord kept putting up little red flags. And I kept thinking, you know, there's something that's just not right about this. But I did like the power that I was um, coming in contact with. I started being respected by people at school. There was, you know, we had 250 students at this school. The students there respected me. I had authority over other people as I moved up in rank. So that was what I was looking for. I was looking for something that gave me power. This was my instructor, and this was the night that I made my black belt after 14 years of training under him. And the reason that I show this picture is because as you see some of these pictures I'm going to show you as I progressed in time, notice the eyes. You can always tell a person by their eyes. You always know what's in someone's heart when you look in their eyes. And you guys know that. If you're dating a girl or if you're married to a girl, you can tell when she really loves you by her eyes. She doesn't have to say a word. But when you look into a martial artist's eyes, you'll see something else. You don't see something that tells you of Jesus Christ. And when you look at that, you can tell by my instructor's face and mine, the only thing that mattered to us was number one. Be number one at all cost. This was at one of the tournaments that we were holding. Um, we taught a lot of young people. Right now, today in the United States, martial arts is growing so fast, especially since the 1970s. And... As martial arts is growing, they pull in young people. Most of the students that we had at the school that I trained at there in Tennessee, most of the students were between the ages of 15 and 25. We had very few students that were over 25 years old. One of the reasons that, that that was that way was because people between the ages of 15 and 25 are very impressionable. They're looking for a leader. They're looking for someone to admire, someone to look up to. And it got to the point where all of the students at the school, we looked at the instructor as though he was our father or as though he was God. If he said, this is what you should eat, we all went home and ate it. If he said, this is how you should dress, we all went home and dressed that way. If he said, this is how you should, you know, uh, what type of movies you should watch, or whatever he said, that's what we did because we wanted to be like him. And the problem is that's what we're supposed to do with our Savior. We're supposed to see Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and say, that's what I want to be like. But rather than that, we were looking to a man. And these young people, they got to the point where they looked to me for an example. There was always a lot of responsibility because you always had people you know, watching you. When I would go out to the mall... People would come up I'd never even seen before, and they'd say, oh, I, I remember seeing you, or I remember watching you in a fight, and this is so good to meet you, and they'd shake my hand. And it got to the point where it just kept feeding the ego. It always fed your ego to where your pride grew, and you thought you were better than other people. I made black belt in full context Chinese boxing. This was the, the next system that I began to train in. This was... Let's see if anybody here recognizes that symbol. Does anybody here recognize that? That's the Filipino, Kali, or Filipino Escrima. Is anybody here familiar with that? I saw a, a gentleman who became one of my best friends do a demonstration with Filipino Kali or Escrima. And what I saw him do with his hands and with knives and with sticks was beautiful. And I said, I'd really like to learn how to do that. And since I'd already made black belt in a couple of other styles... 
I started training with him. And he lives in Atlanta now. He has a big school, about a 7,000 square foot building, trained with people all over the United States. But even in this system, I'm going to back this up a little bit, every system that I trained in had a, a symbol that represented their style. And when you look at this, you see the triangle, and then you see a triangle within it. The symbols always represent something hidden. I want you just to notice that as we go through some of these pictures. This symbol, you see the Philippine on the right, and then you also see the Chinese yin and yang on the left. After I made black in the Filipino system, I started really pursuing rank in a system called Tai Chi Quan or Tai Chi Chung. Are you all familiar with that system? A lot of people see Tai Chi, it's, it's very slow, and they say it's good for relaxation, it's good for breathing. Um, it's promoted as a health benefit. It's promoted as something that will build your health, give you more flexibility. But what they don't tell you is, is it's all based on Taoist ideas. And Taoism is based on the yin and yang, or the yin and yang, depending on where you're from. But in the Chinese system of Tai Chi, I made black after about five years, an instructor level. And then I began training in a system called Aikido. Has anyone here heard of Aikido before? Steven Seagal, does anybody know who that is? He does Aikido. Because of my training in the Tai Chi, and I was learning all these Taoist principles of what they call yin and yang, opposites. And what they teach in yin and yang or in Taoism is, is that everything exists because it has an opposite. They say you have male and female, two halves of one. They say you have light and darkness, good and evil, hard and soft. Um, the problem with that is, though, is that's not what the Scripture says. The Scripture says that God Almighty is light and in Him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. The Taoists teach that you can't have light unless darkness exists. And that's scary because that's saying that both of them are equal. That you have to have the bad in order to have the good. That you have to have sour so that you know what sweet tastes like. The problem is though is when that follows through and you start looking at the Scripture from that, that's saying that you have to have the devil in order for there to be God. And it also teaches that they are both one and the same, just two different aspects of the same being. The Aikido system is a Japanese system. And the reason that I started training in Aikido was because they taught the same principle. They taught the principle of soft movement instead of hard movement. This symbol, the reason I did this, one of my students that made black under me, um, he drew this for me to put up at the school. And that symbol that you see on the Japanese flag, do we have anybody here from Japan? Do you know, do you know what the red circle is on the Japanese flag? The sun. That's right, the sun. And there's not anything wrong with the sunshine. But when you start realizing that that philosophy is embedded in every martial art, the sun, the sun god, that is what that symbol says. That symbol says that these practitioners of martial arts gain their power by what's behind them. The power behind the art is the sun. This was the founder of Aikido. His name was Moriai Ueshiba. And what he's doing with his hand is he's holding out the hand and he's saying all the power of the universe is in your hand. And the Japanese call that power ki. The Chinese call it chi. Uh, the Indian from India, they call it prana. But they say that that energy is tao or yin and yang. That that energy is in everything. Every one of us have it and all we have to do is release it. And so the, all the training in the Chinese Kung Fu and in the Japanese Aikido is to teach you how to release this power that they say that you have within you. And the first school that I began training at, the, the Chinese Kung Fu school, there was one guy when I started there that was a black belt. And he, when he fought, he could fight three or four green belts at one time and usually within one minute defeat all of them in 60 seconds. 